Okay. So now, uh, the first question in this trial exam, you need to find uh, the range of the function here. So now, this fx function is very easy. You can see the negative gradient here. And uh, it is from minus a to minus a to plus 2a. So 2a is here. Then, uh, then what you can get is uh, a negative gradient, so something like this. So this should be a solid circle. This should be a open circle. So what would be your uh, range here? So when uh, x is equal to minus a, right? When x is equal to minus a, you put minus a here. So that would be 2a. So it's going to be 2a here. And when you put uh, 2a, it's going to be minus a. So it is going from minus a to 2a, but you have to be very careful that this should be a solid circle. So it's inclusive. This one should be exclusive. So the answer should be uh, C. Then what about this one here? If a and b are real constants, then the function, it's a quadratic, you can see, fx will have an inverse function if, will have an inverse function if. So how do you understand that? Like you can do the complete in the square method here, x plus b squared, then you get minus b squared here, that is fx. So accordingly, you can plot this, right? Because in this question, you can see ABCs are involving. So these people are a little tricky. Why? Because uh, they are not allowing you to use the gas. This is gas active, but you can see the flexibility of using this gas, very less. This is how they challenge you. Otherwise, you can, be, you can put the things into the gas and get the answer, right? So they are not going to give you the flexibility. That's why I'm always saying they're pretty smart. So you get this one. So I think it should go through here. And then all the details are here, right? So this is going to be, uh, this is minus B. Okay. So that is like that. Then what the question is, we'll have the inverse function. So how do I attack this problem? Okay. So the extending point is this, you can see that. So to have an inverse function, you know, there is a one criteria to be satisfied. That would be one to one. Inverse function be a one to one. So in this case, you have to restrict the domain, right? So you remember when I was teaching you this, I showed you that this example I showed you. Think about sine curve. So if you want to get the inverse of sine curve, you can't have this entire domain. You have to restrict the domain so that the sine curve is one-to-one -one function. So in that case, you can restrict from zero to pi divided by two, then you're going to ignore these things. So this is one-to-one -one portion. This portion is one-to-one, -one, right? So remember, they are coming now. So um, now you have to restrict the domain. So, so how do we restrict the domain? No. So this A value, right? This A value should be what? This A value would be what? So is it negative B? You have to understand like anything here. below negative p. Yeah, you have to understand here my yes. minus infinity is what they have given. So you are counting from this side, right? 
So your A should be restricted from here. So this is the part that you have to count. So that will tell you that A should be less than minus B. Because this is minus B, so we are looking at the minus part of it. So this will give you A plus B less than zero. So the answer would be B. See, small details are important here. Third question we skipped. Fourth question also we skipped because of the modulus. Fifth question. Now, fifth question is very good. So look at how these people are putting this knowledge into this business. So you need to find ddx of f of hx. Now, if you have this, you can't differentiate. Why? Because you don't have x here. So remember what I told you. You have to construct. So you put hx here. In differentiation, remember, you construct. Then the construction you cancel. Okay. The construction you now cancel. Okay. Then what is happening? Here, hx is given x squared, so this is straight away gx, uh, 2x. Now, if you look into this one, right, so a hint is given to you here. Now, when I was uh, teaching you functional analysis, like uh, in the 11, uh, you, know, you know, gallery of graphs and uh, functions and relations, right, more than what the book is saying, I told you that if you have x here, you should have x here. So that's the variable. If you have p here, you should have p here and you have to have p here. Now, if you have h here, that means you have to h here, you have to have h here. And that is what you have here. Right? So straight away, you can say this is nothing but g of hx. That's what it is. It's just pure observation knowing the fundamentals. So now this is nothing but g of hx would be what? x squared times 2x is the answer. So I think the answer would be uh, 2x g x squared is the answer. Now, question number six. If fx is equal to square root of x gx and g is this, find f dash for again differentiation question, right? So what you do, they're asking this, right? So you have gx. So what you do, you take the differentiation of the left hand side becomes this, right hand side becomes, I'm using the product rule, right? using the product rule, that. Now, you remember when I was teaching this material, I told you that ddx of x square root is equal to one divided by two x square root. You remember, right? So they're coming, they're coming, okay? So you should be able to nonchalantly put those things there, okay? So knowing these things, I taught you those things when I was teaching. Now, you need to have f dash four. So that means x is equal to four, right? So that means you have to sub that value here. g dash four here plus g four and divide by two four square root. This is going to be two g dash four is a uh, Give uh, g, it's given here, it's a minus one plus g4 is given eight divided by square root four is two, two times two is four. So your answer would be minus two plus two answer is zero. So dash four is zero. 
That's not what you said. Back. Okay, I hope you understand that question. Question number seven again, uh, because of this we can skip. Question number eight. Okay. In question Wait, sir. Wait, eight. Sir. Yeah. One second. So now the inverse of the function Okay, so I have to see this one. This inverse of the function, this. Okay, so now we will find the inverse. So y is equal to x squared minus four. So you swap it. So it's going to be this. So y is equal to plus or minus x plus four square root. Oh, good. Now you have plus and minus, right? Seemingly, this is a tricky question. Why? Because plus and minus is coming. So we have to now think what to select right so we get the answer so we we reject this we reject this but we have to accept these three now now i can see they are playing with the boundaries the domain and the range right that's the next step we have to take care why because these are the things that now we have to fix so now, you know, in inverse functions, right? You know, domain of F is equal to range of, range of F inverse, right? So domain of F, now domain of F is given here, R minus, R minus is minus things, right? So this is R minus, should be is equal to range of F inverse. Ran means what? Y values of Y values of inverse function. So Y values of inverse function is negative. Negative. So in that case, I will accept this and this. I will reject this. Why? Because if with this negative, you get the negative value for the Ys. Okay. Okay, so, and then, so we take the negative sign. Also, there is another relation uh, that would be, so this is one, one of my condition, right? So the other condition would be ran of F should be is equal to domain of F inverse. Okay, so ran of F is what? So what is the range of F now? So, so now you can see it is going from zero to infinity, right? Because if you put zero here, that is minus four, right? Sorry, minus four to infinity. If you put zero here, it's minus four. Any number, any number from here, you put it there, so it's going to be infinity, right? So it would be like this. So domain of f inverse would be that. So what, from these two, which one will satisfy that? So this is wrong, again, this is correct. See, so this is three layer filtering system. Three layer filtering system, right? So these things you should have in a more crispier way, you can see, should be in your blood, 100%, right? Okay, what about this question? Okay, so the point three minus four lies on the graph of this. So that means we can write y is equal to minus four f3. That is what we can do. Then the graph of the function ygx passes through that. So this is going through that. So then you can say two is equal to g minus five also. Okay. Now, you have to match with these things, right? So you have to match with these things. So you can see GX is subjected. So you have to see. So then GX, G is here. 
right? So now this is a relation between G and M. So to find the value here, the function functional relation here, you have to use this. That is the whole criteria. Now what you can do, okay, what you can do, you have to, uh, you know, go by one, one by one. So if you do minus five here, right? So X is minus five, right? So that would be minus five minus two, minus five minus two, inside becomes, so if X is equal to minus five, inside becomes minus seven. So minus seven is not there, right? So rejected. If you put minus five here. So it's not that, it's three. Setting. It's uh, inside is three, not minus seven. Because it's negative five cancels oh, out with the sorry, negative. Sorry, 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 my mistake. Okay, so if you put minus, minus five here, yeah, minus minus five, right? So it's going to be three, yes, you're right. So F3 minus two, F3 means what now? F3 is minus four, minus four. Okay, F3 is minus four. Then minus two, oh, I forgot this minus, it's gonna be plus. I'm sort of blank, okay? So two is the answer. So that makes sense, but that should be the answer straight away. Straight away, that should be the answer, right? So I'm not going to do, it's just a matter of checking, right? Sub subbing in the values, that's it. Okay, so this question, now this one here, we will break this. So one to three, four dx, integration, right? Three, one to three, fx dx. Aman, what is the answer for this one? You got the right? You got this one right? I got C. I think that was correct. I, I don't know if I heard it correctly or not. Huh? Yeah, C is the answer. So two. Then what you need to find is this, right? So I'm going to isolate this. So if I isolate this, look what you get. So three, one to three fx dx is equal to one to three four dx minus two. Then integration one to three fx dx is equal to one divided by three, four dx would be so I'm going to take four out, x three one, if you integrate, minus two divided by three, x one to three. So those details you know in integration. So the value would be here, value would be here, three minus one, two, eight divided by three minus, three minus one again, two, four, four divided by three. So it's going to be four divided by three. Is it right? Is it right? Am I doing it? I feel like I'm doing a simplification mistake somewhere. Yeah, minus two. Then two eight. This is right. So two here. Four divided by three. Something is wrong here. Let's see. Okay, let's see from here. Something is wrong with the calculation. So this is going to be four times three minus one, two minus two. 
So it's going to be six, 6 divided by 3, 1, 3, f, x, d, x, d. I couldn't find that one, but it should be easy, this one. Then they're asking 3 to 1. You can see the boundaries have changed. So if the boundaries have changed, you introduce a minus sign. So minus 2 is answer. So that's easy. Okay, what about this question? So, so graph, the graph, the graph of the function. Okay, I'm noticing a few things here. One is x cubed, x and x. So that means I can factorize it. That I noticed. Because the x-axis only once, only once, like only once and has two stationary points. So they have given you two clues here. The first clue is the graph crosses the x-axis only once. That means one solution. One solution to what? Fx. The other clue is has two stationary points. How to find the stationary point? Stationary point is when f dash x is equal to zero x axis only one solution so the one solution how do you find that one solution thing fx is equal to zero right those are basic understanding then uh okay so we'll go with the first one so i can write take x out x squared plus bx plus c squared now to have one solution this should be is equal to zero Break grade nine math. So then if you need to have one solution, right? This from here, if you use the null factor, x is equal to zero is a is a obvious solution. So one solution is coming from there. So that means from here you should get no solution to satisfy that. So that means your discriminant should be less than zero. So that is the relation you are. Uh, deriving from there. So that would be b squared minus 4c squared less than 0. So this is my first condition from the given detail. This is how you throw your experience. Okay, So I'm inexperienced. You have to understand because I'm just a teacher. I'm just teaching when it is necessary only. Right? So, so you are the Hussein Bolt. I'm just the coach. I can't run like you. But I will train you like this. You run later. Now, um, two stationary points. Okay, so two stationary points means you have to do this, right? So if you do that, you get three x squared plus two b x plus c squared should be equal to zero. So now, how many two stationary points? So two stationary point means delta should be greater than zero in that case because there's a contradict there. For that condition, this is a must thing to do, right? So here you get 4b squared minus 12, 4ac, 12c squared, right? Greater than zero, right? So now this is the condition you have from there. Now from here, from the first one, we can get, um, from the first one, what we can get? We can get b squared divided by c squared is less than four, right? So from here you can get, uh, you, you need to get the square rooting, right? So when you do the square rooting, okay? So when you do the square rooting, you get b divided by c less than 4, but greater than minus 4. Sorry. Sorry. Not 4. It's 2. Right? My mistake. 2, 2, 2. Right? So when you're converting, that is happening. Now, if you convert this one, what you get? You get here uh, B 
b squared divided by c squared. I will do it straight away. Greater than 3, right? Yes. Greater than 3. Okay. Now, from here, you get b divided by c greater than c less than Oh, uh, sorry. Right. B divided by C greater than. So now you have to take the square root in here. B divided by C, you get the square root here, right? So, okay. So you get plus or negative, right? This way. But you have to think something here. The same thing you have to think here. So I will erase this one, but I will write this in this way. B divided by C less than two. Or I will erase this less than plus and minus is coming, right? So like here, understand this? B divided by C plus and minus square root three is coming. Now, the question is telling us B and C are non-zero positive constants, right? Non-zero positive constants. So that means they cannot be negative. So they cannot be negative means you are going to get rid of this negative. You are going to get rid of this negative. Why? Because you get the negative sign if B and C are negative only. One of the B or one of the C, not at the same time, right? So that will tell you that this B divided by C is less than two, right? From here you get B divided by C greater than square root three. So if you combine these together, you can write B is B divided by C is less than two, greater than, square root 3. So, E is the answer. So, let's talk about this. Um, a certain curve has its gradient. Fine. If the curve crosses the x-axis at this crosses the x-axis at this, then it crosses the y-axis. Can you see the way they are asking the question, right? It is confused, right? But crosses the y-axis, they are asking y intercept. Can you see? Yeah. These people are very smart. They are asking y intercept. The x-axis at, that means they have given you uh, x is equal to pi divided by 2 when y is equal to 0. The boundary condition is given to you. Boundary condition is given to you in a different way. Then the gradient, they have given you in this way. So that means gradient, they have given you, gradient means a slope, 6 for sine x divided by 3. Now, when I was reading this, I was thinking, why they have given you the gradient in terms of x? You can see the gradient in terms of x is given to you. Remember when I was teaching the gradient lesson, how many times I tried to explain to you that this gradient is a function of x unless that is evaluated at a point. So things are coming. Okay, so that 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 is very important. Now, this is nothing but ddx of uh, we'll call it y. Right, and that is the gradient, and that is in terms of x, right? In general, now the boundary conditions are given. They're asking some y intercept, so that means you are obviously going for the integration. Why? Because when you integrate, the boundary condition helps you to find the unknown constant, right? So you integrate it. So integrate. D dx of y, dx here. 
So it's going to be six integration cos x divided by three dx, right? Plus integration constant k comes out. So from here you get y. So it's going to be six. So this is going to be what? This is going to be three sine x divided by three plus k. So that integration is pretty straightforward. Okay. So that is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> So now you can see, uh, you can now use the boundary when x is equal to pi divided by two. So it's 18 sine x is equal to pi divided by two. So x is equal to pi divided by two is, it's pi divided by six, right? Y, K, sorry, the Y should be zero there. It should be zero. So you get, uh, 18 times sine 30, sine 30 is half, right? Plus k, zero. So from here you get k is equal to minus one. So you can write the equation y is equal to 18 sine x divided by three, k is minus nine. So this is the equation. Now, what they're asking? They're asking, uh, Uh, then it crosses the y-axis is set. So they're asking the y-intercept, right? So y-intercept means when x is equal to zero. So when x is equal to zero, you can see that would be minus nine. So please answer. Right. So that's how you do that question. Okay, so now next question. The area of the region enclosed by the graph. Okay, so the graph, if the graph is given to you, you have to pay attention here. So there is a, um, there is a uh, quadratic. So, right, so there is a quadratic. So you can see x is equal to zero and x is equal to minus a are the uh, intercepts, right, x intercepts. So that means you have to, and you can see the, uh, you can see the coefficient of x squared is positive. So that would be like this term. So zero and minus zero. Then where A is a positive number, right? Right, okay. The x, the x axis and the x is equal to A. So x is, if x is a positive number, so it would be like this. X is equal to A is that line. So they're asking you to find the area enclosed by. So that means they're asking the area, this one, and the area, this one, right? So I would say this is A1 area, this is A2. So what is A1? A1 would be negative. You can see it's in the negative, so you put a negative sign. From where to where? Minus A to A, minus A to zero. Um, you know, X, X plus A, DX. Area two, it's in the positive side, so it's positive. Zero to A, X, X plus A, DX. So, okay. So the total area, right? So total, A total would be A1 plus A2. So A1 would be, okay, what is A1? Minus, that would be X squared, right? So X3 divided by three plus, okay, so it's AX, right? So A X squared divided by two minus A to zero plus, Right, so x3 divided by three plus a x squared divided by two from zero to a, right? 
So you can't do this in the cache because A is unknown. So they are very smart to give these questions. So you feel the pain in the exam. Okay. So if you do that, what you get here is minus minus a cube divided by three uh, plus a cube divided by two. If I'm wrong, tell me. Here, a three divided by three plus a three divided by two. So I think I'm right here. So if you do that, yeah, I think I'm right. Um, so if you do this one, you get two, three, so six, so it's minus a cube divided by six, plus you get two, three, five, a cube divided by six. So, So on my right or something. Let's see. Uh, X3, if you put X3 there, yeah. Okay, so they're asking. That. So I'm getting here four A three divided by six. That answer is not there. Okay. So the mistake here is you have to put zero first, right? So then you get zero minus, then you get all the things, right? And then there is a minus outside, which is this minus. So this minus with this one becomes positive, but I got it negative. So it should be positive here. So that's the mistake. So I have to have positive here and it should be positive here. So, so it should be 6A3. So it's a calculation mistake, right? Pay attention. Now she should be A. <clears throat> Again, this question here. The height h, h meters above the ground of a capsule on the London eye, blah, blah, blah. And then the average height they ask. Then they have given you a period, average time, average time. You know, I told you this average, if it is average, the average value of a function is one divided by B minus A, which is upper boundary minus lower boundary, A to B, fx dx that's it right so here what you have to do is your upper boundary is 5 minus 3.75 and then integration 3.75 to 5 and then h of t okay I, I will write that function here 68 minus 67 cos 5t divided by 15 the whole thing dt. Okay. So if you do, if you do that, you get the answer. And you can you can feed this into gas easily because all the numbers are there, right? So you can do that and get the answer. And uh, answer would be for this question 15 is t. Okay, you should get the answer if you do that one. Okay. Okay. Now, now this question, question 16. The graph of y, you can see how these people give you questions. Very smart, I told you always. Exponential with trigonometric together, right? If n is a, a you know sub, uh, is an element of z, then the graph this okay crosses the x-axis at x is equal to this and the turning point of this one, right? So how do you do that? So how do you do that? Crosses the x-axis. Crosses the x-axis means y is equal to zero. That's what you have to understand, right? 
So y is equal to zero means this is zero. And then you can see when x is, so y is equal to zero. So that means you have to solve for x, right? So, uh, and turning point is this, right? So uh, also you can see that y zero line is not going to cross by this, right? Why? Because it would be a, it would be an asymptote like this, right? See, like intellectual heaviness, look at the intellectual heaviness here. Then the only condition which gives this is cos this one is equal to zero. Okay, so now cos x divided by three is equal to zero, right? And then you have to find this. So when you see these kind of stuff, you can see that general solutions are provided, right? So you can find the general solution here for x. So what that would be, right? So what that would be. So if you get cos k, right? Cos k mm, is equal to zero, right? So what are the solutions you get here? What are the solutions you get from here? K is equal to what? Cos. What are the solutions? Um, it would be uh, two pi, right? K. plus or minus zero, right? Pi divided by two, right? Pi divided by two. So is that correct? So it's pi divided by two, right? Two, uh, because here you get the other solution. So actually this should be, think about this. This should be pi k plus, Pi k plus pi divided by two. So think about it. Why I'm telling you that? Because here, you know, if you get a cos, there are two solutions here. Okay, think about it. Think about it. And k. So k is equal to x divided by three. So you get x is equal to three pi k plus pi divided by two. So, okay. Plus or minus, right? Plus or minus. Okay. So then what they have, so I'm looking at the answers now. So they have taken pi divided by two out. So three, if you take pi divided by two out, then you get plus or minus one here. Then you get, uh, you get two K, right? Yeah. You get two K. Then the plus solution is disregarded in, in, in each and every, right? So that means we consider only minus because in the solutions, you don't have that plus solution. So 2K minus one, pi divided by two, X. So that we obtained. Okay, so look at the intellectual thing, okay? Now where we have that, this why am I am doing this? So where we have that three, um, we have that here and we have that here. Okay, so the rest is rejected. Okay, so then next one crosses uh, 
these two right so these two are correct has a turning point okay turning point so how do you find the turning point okay turning point how do you find the turning point turning point means at the turning point you know d stationary point right turning point means this should be equal to zero right this should be equal to zero so your y is there so you put this into the cas and put that into zero so you should get the general solution easily so it would be cod what is the answer here 16b is the answer right so when you put this into the cas right you will get x is equal to 3 4 and minus or oh, or oh, oh, here n so in my case i took k right doesn't matter divide by 4 so you should get this one it's a cas question because i can do it manually it takes forever because you can see two functions are there so i have to I use the product rule and all those business and simplify right so it's not a good idea to do that there why because it's a cas question so now this is all about it